none of you are troubled, nuffled, and muffled by air pockets, namely sex, politics, and religion. As we take off, please open your window blinds and make yourself visible. Fasten your seat belt. Stay calm, composed, and quiet. Speak only. Right steward asks you to speak. The experienced commander of your speech flight has for the last three and a half years had over 500 speech hours and had traveled to multiple domestic and international Toastmasters destination. To name a few, Utopia in South Africa, Hawaii, Southern California in USA, Dublin in Ireland, Holborn, Kent, Stanford, Wessex, Eastbourne in UK, Munich in Germany, Paris in France, and yesterday she went to the land of rising sun, and the list goes on and on. She leaves her audience spellbound by her dazzling display of dignified speeches, which gets mapped in her audience's mind, and they eagerly look forward to travel through her next speech flight again and again and again. Toastmasters, guests, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with round of applause the commander of your supersonic speech flight, Toastmaster Deepa Sampat Kumar. So, uh, uh, Milin sir, I have just one request to you. Deepa got uh, power cut issue. So, can you address uh, the president? Instead of her. Uh, you got muted, I guess. I can't hear you. Can someone, uh, Zoom master, unmute? Uh... Distinguished Toastmaster Milan. Yes. He's unmuted. Yeah. Just so, the, if I had. Yes, uh, yes, so Milan, sir. You join in a couple of minutes. Okay, sure. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We're excited to have you. And our speaker is just as excited to take us through how to mind map. Uh, we're just waiting for our president to join in. She seems to have some network issues and just dropped off. But she's trying her best to quickly get on board so that we can get started. Uh, I'd like to know if you are as excited as me. So give me a yes in the chat window if you're excited. Give me a yes. 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 Yay. Yes. Yes. Of course. Keep them coming. Can you tell me from which part of the world you are from? Type in Tokyo, Malaysia, Bangalore, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, India, Abuja. It's so fast, I cannot read Ethiopia, Trinidad and Tobago, Abuja, Nigeria, Mumbai, India, Australia, wow, I got even the temperature at the location they are from. <laughs> Longitude and latitude. And also, uh, we have someone from the world. Definitely, we're all global Toastmasters, globe trotting around the world. And being able to attend meetings in different clubs, in different locations, have helped bring so many of us here to listen to what Kyle has to say today. 
Um, I know I've definitely struggled with writing my speeches. Have any of you faced trouble in writing your speech? Give me a yes or a no. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, every time. We may know everything about the topic. We may have a zillion thoughts. But how do we choose what to write down? We have lovely stories, experiences that we've been through. But we know we have no clue how to structure it, how to keep the audience engaged. How do we decide what to edit, what not to put on the paper, what not to speak? How do you decide what words to get out of your script to keep it tight and keep the audience hooked to what you have to say? How do you decide what is the real essence of the message that you have to give the audience? Public speaking, where one of the district champions from Ghana who's helped me with my preparation table topic contest, uh, uh, Toastmaster Evans, who's a wonderful person told me, public speaking is about talking to a friend and you have others listening in to the conversation. It just completely changed my perspective and helped me face the contest with more confidence. What are you expecting to learn from today's session? Can you tell me? What, what do you struggle when you write a script? Please share in the chat window. I have too much content. That's my struggle. I want to write everything and then I run out of time while I speak. To say no expectations, I want to be how to add triplets? My God, I don't even know what triplets are. How to mind map, clear cut opening, body and conclusion. Same here, too long a story. Structure of speech, to be more concise. Exactly, that's what I would love to do. Articulate my thoughts with mind map. Content. So uh, me and some of my friends uh, at Speech Weavers, we did try mind mapping, but we had no clue exactly how mind map works. So we did a berserk and random way of doing it, but we definitely know that we've not used the right method. Do we have our presiding officer, Toastmaster Deepa back? Not yet. No, she, yes. She is not here yet. So can so, we proceed with Melin, sir? Okay, do, do you want to go on next or shall I introduce? Yeah, you can introduce, okay. So once I was lucky enough to be a speech weaver when we met offline. So I get a message in the group saying, there's a new person, he's a guest, but we're going to reach late. Vandana, can you help in getting him into the building? Because you need to register. And it was, we were meeting at a wonderful co-working space. At the end of the meetings, we could have free beer, free coffee, and free cookies. And at the reception, I see this tall, handsome, smart-looking guy who looked completely confused, not knowing where to go. And I ask him, are you Mayur? Are you here to attend a speech? We were like, yeah, how do you know? Yeah, hi, I'm Vandana. The person who was supposed to meet you couldn't make it. This person is a completely target-oriented, goal-oriented sales guy. He knows how to sell his things. He decided he wanted to join Toastmasters to help sell his ideas, communicate better. And I've seen him grown over the years, over the months. Sorry, it almost feels like years into a wonderful leader. He's also our VP education. I'd like to invite Toastmaster Mayur, over to you, our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Vandana, for the wonderful introduction. Good evening, everybody at virtual meeting today. Today, we are here to learn and understand about writing a good speech using mind mapping. While writing a speech, have you ever felt sleepy, just like me? I felt most of the time. You can type your answers in yes or no. Yeah, I see one no. 
one years okay lot of years okay great so th this happened to most of us all the time let's see when you are thinking of one topic and your brain give you another ideas once upon a time while i was writing a speech and after few minute of thinking my mind told me to watch peaky blinders or money heist this happened to most of us isn't it you can share your thought what got by what you got distracted yeah you might be doing netflix and chill yes day dreaming social media yes scrolling through phone that is good yeah so we are all uh, doing guilty things all the most of the time while writing a speech today at speech viewer we are fortunate to have distinguished toastmaster and he is joining at the crack of dawn at 5:30 am all the way from sequim washington i want to ask you few questions how long does it take to write a speech or presentation does it hours days or even week so i told you about my story when i was uh, just joined toastmasters so while writing first speech it took me around a week to compose recheck with my mentor and then deliver it do you struggle when you start writing talks or presentation or did you know you could write speech quickly easily in mere minutes can you type your answers okay i see three days few months weeks three months <laughs> yet this uh, so have you ever been given just moment of, to come up with an organized presentation by your manager yes yes this happened to most of us when at last moment when our manager told us to give our quarterly report report to the board in 5 minute and you are feeling in shock yet yes this happened to most of surprise like this get dropped us on in on us in real life when does it when it does are we ready to help us with writing crisis and to make a writing speech writing effective and enjoyable task he is here to teach us some of what he has learned over the period of time on how to write a good speech fast with mind mapping so be ready yourself and make sure you have a good notebook and paper and pen with you along with that i want you to have an idea for a topic suitable for a 5 to 7 minute of speech i am sure you will have a lot of question to ask at the end of the presentation you can post your questions in the chat box and our q and in the q and a segment your question will get answered so let me introduce him professionally he is a he is into computer industry for more than 20 years and 9 year into project management currently working as a business consultant and this has nothing to do with his presentation his home club is skwim scream toastmaster club and he is a member of three advanced club nerd master sound as voice and laugh lab story masters kyle hall is a past district director second runner up in 2003 world championship of public speaking a distinguished toastmaster with more than 27 year of experience as a toastmaster 
and he delivered many of his speech written just moment before he stood up so put your hand together to help me welcome kyle hall kyle hall how to write good speech fast with mind mapping kyle hall over to you thank you mayor when i joined my home club which was golden bell toastmasters years ago we uh, we were a few months into into the year and we usually had three speakers and then table topics and three evaluators standard toastmasters meeting and one day I came in and the Toastmaster was kicking off the meeting and said, oh, speaker number two isn't here. Well, I guess we'll, we, I guess we don't need evaluator number two. We'll just get out a few minutes early. And as a new Toastmaster, I didn't realize, okay, I guess that's how it works. Well, a few months go by, different Toastmasters standing up there, kicking off the meeting. And he goes, oh, speaker number three couldn't make it today. And I was expecting him to say, oh, we're, well, I guess we'll get out a few minutes early. He didn't do that. He said, speaker number three couldn't make it here today. Who wants to give a near impromptu five to seven minute speech? And then he did a remarkable thing. He shut up and waited. And silence filled the room. And finally, one hand kind of went up. You know, okay, I'll do it. And that person stood up at, you know, at the appointed time and they give your speech. Good speech. But the fact that that Toastmaster did that changed something in the club. Months go by. Another speaker can't make it. Hey, we have, your speaker number one isn't here. Who wants to give a five to seven minute near impromptu speech? Two hands go up. The next time this happens, three hands go up. It became, it rapidly became a competition. If a speaker didn't show up, you had a chance to do a near, a near impromptu speech and four or five hands are going up. And this, this went on for a couple of years. And I became one of those hands. I became one of the people who rose their hand all the time. Oh, I'll give a speech with almost no preparation. And finally, some of the newer members of the club, newer then, I was no longer the new member. Finally, some of the new members said, how do you guys do that? How do you put your hand up and then prepare a speech in just a few minutes and, and make it coherent? Well, myself and my mentor, Diane, and a couple of the other members, we, we, we talked about it. We compared notes. And it turns out that four out of the five of us were using mind mapping. We'd learned mind mapping somewhere along the way, and we were all using it. And at that point, I started to put together this talk on how to write a good speech fast with mind mapping, because I realized this is not a skill being taught everywhere, and it's very powerful. It's, it's amazingly powerful to be able to say, oh, you want a speech on earthquake preparedness? Okay. Five minutes later, after a few notes, ready to go. You know, I use mind mapping all the time in preparing my speeches. If I'm preparing a five to seven minute speech, mind mapping is usually the first thing I do. If I'm preparing a 40 minute workshop, I will mind map it. Three day workshop, I will mind map it. Uh, it's just, it just the mind maps get bigger <laughs> for the longer speeches. Now, do you have my handout? Hopefully you have, a, you have the handout and have downloaded it. If not, um, Adkesh, would you put the link in the chat again so people can download the handout? And I'm going to share my screen because I'm going to walk you through. I want to introduce you to mind mapping, and then I'm going to show you how to use it. And I will be asking you to type things into the chat window. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. So let's talk about some mind mapping basics. A typical mind map starts with the central idea in the middle of, uh, well, in this case, the screen. Now, I'm using a mind mapping tool. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. 
I do 99% of my mind mapping work with a piece of paper and a pencil. And I, and I definitely prefer a piece of paper and a pencil. Uh, but I'm using an electronic tool today because we're remote and I need you to be able to share my screen and have you see what I'm doing. But what are the components of a mind map? So mind maps have nodes. A node is just an idea. So mind mapping basics, that's a node. Oh, they have components. Components is a node. So we're, we're just connecting ideas. Now you notice I'm connecting them with arrows. So mind maps typically use lines to establish relationship between these nodes. Now I'm used three different types of lines there. There is no right way to mind map. Let me make that perfectly clear. Mind mapping, you, the right way to mind map is what works for you. If it makes sense to you, if you can look at it and go, okay, I know what I'm doing here. You know, I can read my mind map, then, that, then that's the right way to do it. You can use colors. You can use images. Obviously you can use text, I'm using text here. <clears throat> I, did, I mind mapped a speech that I was giving in a competition and it was mostly text. And as I developed the speech, I would go out, practice to give it, go home, rewrite it, go out, practice to give it, go home, you know, go home, rewrite it. And one, the mind map got smaller because I, I started replacing text with images. And by the time I was done, by the time I was done, uh, I was at the, I was competing at the division level and my speech consisted of five images. That was my, those were my speech notes, five images. And I, and I was on a, you know, on a piece of paper in my pocket, never had to take it out because I can remember five images. Now, why would you use mind mapping? Well, it really depends upon your learning style. And there are three basic learning styles that most people have. It's something like 60 or 70% of people in the world learn visually. Mind mapping is very visual. It lends itself to visual learning really, really well. Um, the kinesthetic, uh, my wife learns kinesthetic. She, she needs to be moving to learn. Mind mapping can work well too for kinesthetic, but what I recommend is get a big piece of paper so you can make bigger movements while you're mind mapping. I, th I, think, I think the larger the movement uh, helps kinesthetic learners. Audio learners, I'm not sure. There, there aren't that many audio learners, but uh, I'm not sure how mind mapping would lend itself to that. If you're an audio learner and, you have, uh, and you've learned anything about mind mapping and, and are able to use it, I'd love to hear from you because I'm a very visual, I'm a completely visual learner. That, that's me. I can see it, read it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Mind mapping is very, very visually focused. Now, how do people use mind maps? Well, I learned mind mapping in college as a note-taking method. When a professor standing up and they're talking, I, I would try to, I did try to outline things. Uh, if you remember in high school outlining, at least, at least in the US educational system, there was a point where it's like, read this paragraph. What's the main point? What's the sub point? What's the sub point? Next paragraph, what's the main point? Sub point, sub point, outlining. It might be a great way to read a book and analyze what's in it, but it's not a great way to take notes in a class. It just isn't. So I learned mind mapping as a note taking method. Now my notes were only useful to me. Anybody else looking at them, eh, it wouldn't make any, wouldn't make any sense. So it's not, it's not necessarily a great way for, for me to communicate with you, but it's a great way for me to remember what I'm doing. But it's a great brainstorming technique too. And that's what we're using it for. If we're going to write a speech fast and a good speech fast, we have to be able to brainstorm a topic really quick. And that's what we're doing. And then we have to organize it. And I'm going to walk you through that process. And we're going to brainstorm a topic. If we have time, we're going to brainstorm a topic twice. So that's what its uses are for. Oh, what's that's doing there? I think my wife might have been at my slides again. <clears throat> So let's do an exercise. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna go here. We're gonna brainstorm a topic. So I'm gonna ask you to type in a suggestion for a topic that you think we could do in five to seven minutes. 
for the sake of this talk today, we're going to limit ourselves to five to seven minutes. I, I did this one time and a lady and I asked for uh, suggestions for topics and a lady said, how to run a business. Well, that's a three day workshop. <laughs> that's not a five to seven minute speech. Trying to make your topic small enough that you think you could do it in five to seven minutes and type it into the chat. Uh, Vedana, give me two of your favorites and we'll we'll decide which one we're going to use. How I became a designer. Say that again. How I became a designer. Okay, any other ideas? Um, my love for dancing. Love for dancing? Okay, anything else? Yeah, guys, let's get a one common topic. Well, let's go with dancing. Let's go with dancing. Okay, we are getting a lot of answers in the chat box. Time okay. management process of unlearning. What is my leadership style? Okay, leadership style, dancing, what else? Negotiation, art of appearance. Negotiation is a big topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, time management. Time management. The process of unlearning. Okay, so let me ask you guys, I can only see a few of you, so I'll ask, uh, 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 let's stop sharing for a second, May. I can see a few more of you. Um, quick show of hands, would you rather talk, would you rather mind map a uh, quick talk on time management or a quick talk, talk on getting ready to go dancing? Dancing, raise your hand if you want to go, if you'd rather do my dancing. Raise your hand if you'd rather do time management. Okay, we'll do time management. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Uh, I think I'll share the whole screen. Okay, we're gonna do time management. Now, this is gonna be an interesting challenge because we're doing this with 120 people. So you'll have to type stuff into the chat. We're gonna do this by committee. So time management. That's what would that uh, somebody give me a first idea on how to how to do time management. To make a to do list planning scheduling prioritizing. OK, hold on. So somebody said to do lists. Next idea. Then execution, prioritize things. Okay. Um, okay. Prioritize. Are we going to use anything other than to-do lists? We have right tasks. Right. Yeah. Say that again, Vedana. Right. Right task. task. Right. So writing down your tasks. Oh, right tasks. Okay. So I'm gonna. One of the things I do during this is I. I so. Okay. I think that's a sub idea. Of yeah, to do lists is write it. Write it down. Someone says preferring not to do list. Time block based on your to do list. Execution, calendar, calendar, alarms, deadline. Now, hold on a second. So I'm going to move this over here. Whoops, there we go. Calendar. Uh, what was the other? What was the other idea you you mentioned, Vedana? Uh, alarms. Alarms. Oh, okay. Reminders. Reminders. And uh, my prioritize went away, so I'll have to fix that. Um, actually, I think I want to make prioritize. I want to make that a subtopic of to-do lists. Now, one of the reasons I like doing this on pen and paper is I don't have to stop, <laughs> and I don't have to stop and. Uh, 
change arrows and things like that because the tool is doing weird things like curved lines. So let's, reminders, somebody mentioned alarms. That's a good reminder. So let's do a subtopic alarms. What other types of alarms might we, what other types of reminders might we have? So did we add, we have an added calendar. Oh, okay, we have, uh, then alarms, uh, meetings, sticky notes, diary. Okay. Tools, I guess that, that's what everyone is talking about tools. Sticky notes. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to add email. One of my favorite things to do is I, when I set up something in my calendar is I email, I have it email me a reminder. Oh, there's a relationship. So I'm going to connect my calendar to my email. Okay. Uh, we have set, set deadline. Set deadlines. Okay. Uh, time boxing. Time boxing. Somebody's going to have to explain that to me. I don't know what time boxing is. I think you fix a time and then take a break and then come back. You divide into tasks. Uh, so, yeah, break down tasks into specific segments. That's another one. Then we have energy management. Like, I think how energetic you are, probably. Okay. Let's, so let's stop there for a minute. Do you think we have five to seven minutes worth of material here for a speech on time management? I think we probably do. Without, do, I mean, we, and if we spend another 10 minutes on this, we could add to it significantly. So we could, we could build this topic very quickly. Now, this is with us doing this as a group and people typing in with the chat. Imagine if you're just doing this by yourself. You could, you could brainstorm this topic very rapidly. Now let's go back. I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, we're, we're gonna do this again in a minute, uh, but I wanna get us back to, hello. Yeah. Okay. Nope, I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of the other, I'm just getting rid of all that stuff. And we're gonna go back to <clears throat> a central topic in a moment. Let me go back here. Sorry. Okay. Here's the process we're going to follow in a moment. We're going to choose another topic. We're going to brainstorm. it. And this is the process that I like to use. You, could, you can modify it as it works for you. So we choose a topic. We choose a nice, you know, small topic. We brainstorm it like we just did. Now here's where we add some how do you turn that brainstorm into a speech? So we need to come up with our clothes. Let me ask you this. When you start a speech, and this, this is a rhetorical question. You don't need to type it in the chat. When you start a speech, where do you start? Well, you start at the end. When you're planning a trip, you, you, when you're going to plan a trip, you start at where, where you want to end up and then figure out how to get there. And that's how you write a speech. You start at the end. So... If we want to have a good close, we need to know what we want the audience to do differently tomorrow than they're doing today. We need to ask ourselves that. What do we want, what, what do we want them to do differently? What's the desired change? If we're talking about time management, maybe we want them to be slightly more efficient in their time management. Simple. Doesn't have to be complex, but what change do we desire in them? Because we're giving the speech for a reason, even if we're just coming up with it at the at the you know, moments before we stand up to give it, we're still, we still want to change the audience in some way. How do we want them to change? What is the one point we need to leave with the audience in order to create that change? That one point becomes our close. Once we know our close, we can write our opening. We can put the main points that we're gonna talk about in order. We're all gonna, we're gonna do this all in a minute. And if there's things that don't fit, and by the way, that this, this close, this one point, that's the razor I use to cut material out. You know, so suppose in that time management uh, window we had a minute ago, 
Uh, somebody had met, I had put in, you know, time for exercise. Well, maybe time for exercise doesn't fit in my time management thing. Cut it out. And I use that close to figure out what I'm cutting out. If I have time, I might redraw the mind map because by the time I get down here, it might be messy. But if I don't have time, I don't redraw it. And then, of course, you give the speech. Now, even if you're mind mapping a speech and coming up with it at the last minute, you can try to include word pictures, humor, story. The key thing here is to find some way of relating some emotion to the audience because emotion is what sells, sells the point. Emotion is what carries the audience and, and builds that connection between you and the speaker and allows you to move the audience. So that's the process we're going to use. Time for a bit more exercise. And back to here. So I would like another topic, another suggestion for a five to seven minute topic. Guys, please for your answer this topic you want. Communication, yep. leadership, yes. What was that? If communication or leadership. Those are huge topics. Try to make it a little smaller. Cheese, dancing. Okay, dancing again. Yeah, a lot of people are sending dancing, so we can tag that. Okay, let's do dancing. Let's let, let let's just <laughs> let the chase and do some dancing. So we're gonna do a we're gonna rapidly brainstorm a talk on dancing. Give me a subtopic on dancing forms of dancing what was that different forms of dancing okay uh if you don't mind i'm going to change that to type type of you know type of dance let's list a couple of types okay. so salsa classical Learning okay. steps. Okay. Classic. Classical. Salsa. Ballet. Oh, ballet. Okay. Kathak. Wait a minute. What was that uh, last one? Kathak. Is is a form of uh, dancing style in India. How do you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even I am confused about how do I spell it, but I am picking from chat box. So it is written as K A T H A K. Kathak. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop there. Now, type of dancing. That's one of the things. What else? If we're going to talk about dancing, what else do we need to talk about? How about where? Yes. So where do we go dancing? Any suggestions? Practice and learning, folk dancing. These are the forms. OK, I'm going down. From team building again, not a step on your partner's feet. <laughs> Effect of dancing, nightclub, auditorium, studio with friends. Nightclubs, where else can we go dancing? School. School dances. With friends, yeah. Movie, in movies. Oh, dancing in movies. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to. Frank, yes, I'm gonna create another. Dance. I'm okay, gonna, I'm gonna create a. Where can we see dancing? Dance in kitchen as. <laughs> say that, may, say that again, Mayor. Yeah, uh, on the streets, on the beach, drama school. This is all where. This is all underwear. Yeah. Okay. Writings. So beach. 
where else weddings in indian weddings you can see lot of forms in one go we also can see in theaters i missed that last one i'm sorry beach street dance any club i have nightclub schools beach okay someone is bathroom dancer as i heard bathroom singer but dancer <laughs> did you say ballroom yeah ballroom we got earlier yes okay now let's let's generate one more topic for dancing any ideas benefits benefits of dancing okay yeah okay and what are the benefits of dancing exercise it's a form of exercise it make you happy okay i'm going to change happy to fun if that's okay yeah any other benefits to dancing chilling stress relieving stress relieving oh dance as a form of meditation also someone form, gave form of what meditation meditation <laughs> okay not the way i dance <laughs> energize <laughs> yeah uh how about socialization how about social yeah yes yes okay this is good this is a good place to start to stop now we've done the brainstorming we've done the brainstorming so now let's go through the rest of the process we we want to have our clothes and i'm going to put the clothes over here what change do we want the audience to go through if we're going to give this talk what change do we want the audience to go through? Now, I have a suggestion, but uh, I, I want to give you guys a chance to 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 tell me what change do you think we should be asking the audience to go through? Happier, healthier. Should match. They should match interest of dancing. Be to at start peace, dancing. Happy. Was that to start dancing? To close eye. Physical exercise, join dancing, start dancing, lose start. weight. Okay, I'm going to go with that. We are getting... I'm going to okay. say, go out dancing. That's the change we want them to do. Go out dancing. That's our clothes. Okay. Now, what's the one point we need to leave with the audience to get them to go out dancing. I'm sorry. I I I I made a mistake here, which is our sorry. This is the desired change. Not the clothes. What's and the clothes is our one point. What's our one point we need to leave with the audience to get them to go out dancing? How about dancing has a lot of benefits? And would somebody yeah. please stop using the whiteboard? Whoever's using the whiteboard is writing on the screen. Okay, I'll change that. Now they won't be able to write. Okay, so our close is gonna be dancing has a lot of benefits. Now we need to come up with that. Let's come up with our opening. What would be a good opening for a speech like this? Yeah. How about a question? You know, just to get people's attention, questions are great ways to start a, a speech and it can head us in the direction we're going. You want your clothes 
to head you towards your opening. How about, what are you doing Friday night? Does that work? Imagine you are dancing. Are you shy about dancing? Imagine you're dancing. Are you shy about dancing? Yes. Do you want to dance with me? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Do you want to dance with me? When was the last time you saw a dance and where? Shall we have a dance? Okay. So we are getting lucky. Yeah. I need to, we need to, we need to take a razor to this and eliminate things. So we're going to talk to the audience about dancing and getting them, getting them to go dancing. Now, which, is there anything here that leaps off the page at you as not belonging in that category? Because I can tell you when I look at this, the first thing I think about is, well, ballet dancing is not something, you, it's not a social activity. It's something you watch. I mean, unless you're a ballet dancer, in which case it's a profession, but it's not something you do for fun on a Friday night. So let's take ballet out. Just gonna eliminate it. Okay. Now it's a very valid form of dancing, but, if we're, but it doesn't fit with our desired change. You're not going to go out ballet dancing on a Friday night. Um, we can watch dancing. Where can we see dancing? Movies, theaters, and so forth. But that doesn't really fit what we're talking about either, does it? So let's eliminate that. Okay. Now let's order our points. We're gonna, we have our opening. We have our clothes. In what order should we talk about these? I'm going to, for brevity's sake, I'm going to toss out the order that makes sense to me and I'll walk you through it. You guys may order it differently. You might say, no, I wouldn't do That's not the way I would do it. But this is the way I would do it. If we're going to talk about going out dancing, first, let's talk about what type of dancing. That may actually lead us to uh, what we're going to wear. And it may also lead us to where because the type of dancing may determine where you go, right? And I think the last thing we should talk about because it's, the, it's one of the things that might drive people to do it is the benefits. So we have our opening, we have our first subtopic type of dance, our second subtopic, our third subtopic, and we have our close. We have mind mapped this talk. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And I am going to stop sharing for a minute. The, we just mind mapped a speech. Now it took us a few minutes. If we were working by ourselves and we practiced with mind mapping, you could do that. You could make that mind map in 30 seconds or a minute by yourself. It took us longer because if we're, we're doing it by committee using chat on Zoom and I'm using an electronic tool rather than my hand and a pen. So the point I've been trying to make is that we can brainstorm a topic and organize a topic to create a good speech fast but I haven't proven my point yet. I haven't proven my point yet because we've brainstormed a topic and we've organized it, but we don't know if it's a good speech yet because no one's given it. So I'm gonna do that. Actually, I'm gonna to have to keep my glasses on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you wanna dance with me? Do you wanna go out? Dancing with me? It's Friday night. What are you going to do tonight? I want to go out dancing. I want you to come with me. Now, the first thing we have to think about is what type of dancing? Do you like ballroom dancing? Well, now, I admit I, would, I have taken ballroom dancing a couple of times and never that good at it. But ballroom dancing, that could be a lot of fun. How about salsa dancing? Oh, I would love to learn salsa dancing. I haven't learned it. I would love to learn salsa dancing. Folk dancing. I have done folk dancing a little bit. The, the, the do-si-do and the 
and the promenade, promenade. I've done some folk dancing. Now that's that's American folk dancing. You guys would have other versions of folk dancing. Do you know the folk dancing? <clears throat> I would love to learn it. There's a new dance out there I hear about called Kathak. I don't know what it is. I'm curious. I'm Kathak curious. Would you like to go try it with me? Now we have to decide what type of dancing we want to go to because that's gonna decide where we go. I mean, there are very various places you can go. You can go to nightclubs, not a lot of classical dancing in nightclubs. If you wanna go classical dancing, you go to a ballroom, maybe a ballroom with a big band. If you wanna go salsa dancing, oh, that might be a nightclub or it might also be a ballroom, depending. Beaches, well, that's probably much less formal. That might be just impromptu dancing, twisting, uh, you know, whatever type of uh, dance is appropriate for the beach. But two people doing closely coordinated dance steps on a beach, probably not. Sand doesn't lend itself to that. And of course, sometimes we end up in schools. Maybe we're in school, maybe we're chaperoning the school if we have kids. Maybe sometimes we end up in a school and there's a dance going on. Or of course, as I mentioned, taking classes, you might go to a dance school. One of these days, one of these days, I hope my wife and I will go to salsa dance school. I think that would be fun. And that brings us to why would we want to go dancing? I mean, it's exercise, it's, it's sweaty. You end up, you're tired when you don't. Why would you want to go dancing? Well, I just mentioned one of the reasons. Exercise. It's good exercise. What's more, it's fun exercise. Let's face it, dancing with somebody for an hour or two is way more fun than going out for a two-mile bike ride. I mean, a two-hour bike ride or sit or going to the gym for a couple of hours. It's way more fun to dance with somebody. It's also social. When you're dancing with somebody, you're interacting with a fellow human being. It's social. And that's a priceless thing, especially at the end of a tiring day. Oh, tiring days. How about stress relief? You've used your muscles, you've moved around, you've enjoyed some music, and you can just feel the stress of the day flushing off of you, sloughing off of you, like, like down, uh, like water off of a duck. It just goes away. The, the, the stress relieving is, it's almost like meditation, and dancing can be like meditation. You can be in the moment. You can forget about later. You can forget about the past. And you can be in the now with the person you're with and with the movement. Dancing can be magical. Dancing can be magical and it can be fun. And I want you to share in the magic and the fun. I want you to come dancing with me tonight. Will you come? You can put together, we can put together a good speech in a few minutes if we're willing to practice using mind mapping, if we're willing to give it a try. And my challenge to you is to take this technique home, whether you choose to use an electronic tool or whether you choose to use a pen and paper, take it home, try it, use it. Use it a few times. If it doesn't work the first time, don't give up on it, refine it. And then share it with your club, because this tool can make developing a speech very easy and very fast. Are there questions? If there are questions, please type them in the chat. Kyle, you want? Uh, so thank you, Kyle for giving us wonderful insights on writing a speech very fast. That was a very wonderful learning. I would say you explain about uh, mind mapping and its component. We, I know we have a lot of learning styles. Some you said in the, your presentation, visual, auditory, kinesthetics. We can take notes and while writing your uh, speech on dancing, while giving your speech, I was in awe. How did he do that? 
so maybe with practice we will be able to do that in few minutes some in some times and with this i would like to hand over uh, to our q and a moderator and she so before that i would like to i would like all, all the audience to share his feedback using the link below shared by our chat moderator in the chat box and you can ask your questions by putting him and our chat moderator uh, qna moderator will answer all those questions you will ask so to go, i am going to invite our qna moderator she is a ux designer an artist and a dreamer currently she is a club secretary at speech fevers she is more into doodling and drawing people i am i think she might be drawing something today and we will get to see in the end so and she also won various uh, various uh, for like to table topic and speech international speech contest at division level and she is a toastmaster for more than one and a half year now please welcome toastmaster vandana to take questions from our audience and you will get answered by kyle, kyle hall over to you vandana thank you toastmaster mayur i think i may have to practice mind mapping to write down the questions that are pouring in but before we jump into the questions from the audience thank you kyle for taking us through such a wonderful session it's it's about being able to give a speech by just putting out all your thoughts on paper in 5 minutes or less and then being able to recollect it and come and speak facing the fear of not preparing beforehand or not practicing beforehand and facing the audience thank you for inspiring us one of the major questions that came or in our registrations that kept on coming is how do you remember to speak the points that you have noted out in the mind map how okay. do you remember how do you internalize what you're going to speak and come and be able to deliver so while i was giving the speech here you guys couldn't see it cuz i stopped sharing my screen but i wasn't looking at you i had the mind map up on the up on my screen Now when I do this when I when I if I'm going to do this in my club if somebody gives me a topic and I have mere moments to prepare I'll mind map it and when I walk up to the lectern I'll bring the mind map with me Now remember if it only has a few nodes on it if there's only a few ideas I've got the central topic I've got my opening and my close that that's that's critical get your opening and your close down and if I've only got two or three ideas I may glance at that paper once or twice in a 5 minute talk but usually i don't even use it but i'll bring the notes up i you know i'll 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 bring up a piece of paper and i'll just put it on the lectern and then ignore it if i can but if i need to look at it i can just glance at it and keep speaking does that make sense yes it does okay. um I, we feel like sometimes we are cheating uh, when we use an aid but it's absolutely okay because if you've not prepared it definitely is fair to do that Yes, and we should not be so hard on ourselves. Um, so one of the questions is, uh, what is a node? Do you uh, mean, you know, a data point when you refer to a node? In your so mind? a mind map is just a con is a is a just a a connection of ideas. So a node is an idea. If you go back to the dancing node we sh we were looking at, um, hold on, I'm going to share my screen again, just so we can look at it. if we go back to this mind map the idea of dancing i mean that that's a node type of dancing that's a node classical salsa cathcart folk those are all different nodes they're just ideas idea sub idea sub idea sub idea and the lines are just we're establishing a relationship between them so that it keeps organized for us it's not just a a a a random bit of text on the page we see there's a relationship classic salsa cathcart and folk are all types of dance which falls under the category of dancing. I hope Great. that answers that question. Thank you, Kyle. Uh so I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to ask a question that even came to me but I'm picking it up from the audience. 
how do you do the eliminate extra step in when you're using your pen and paper like sure. how you use your uh, digital tool but if you're doing it on pen and paper that that's a critical thing because one of the one of the things we mentioned at one of the desired outcomes from today that was mentioned earlier is how do you trim a talk down because really material enough material for five to seven minutes is not hard it's really how do you take this topic i just came up with and trim it down to five to seven minutes the key thing for me the way i do it the key thing is i need to identify what is the desired change i want to make in the audience what do i want the audience to do differently tomorrow because if I have a desired change, I can, I can come up with my one point. What is the one point I need to make to create that change? You know, my one point for the dancing was dancing is, is fun and meditative. I mean, dancing is fun and, and social and good exercise. Um, what is the one point I wanna make the audience? And I can use that one point as a razor to cut away anything that doesn't fit. So, for instance, we, if we had brainstormed dancing, we might have spent a lot of time brainstorming about ballet. But let's face it, ballet is not something you go do as a social thing on a Friday night. It just isn't. Uh, you know, I'm, unless you're a professional ballet dancer and there's a ballet club I've never heard about. Uh, so we would use our one point to go out dancing. Like, will you go out dancing with me? We'll, we'll use that to eliminate everything that doesn't fit in that category. Does that make sense? And you can do that with speech after speech after speech. If you identify what is the desired change you want to make in your audience. Kyle, I think it, it, it really ties to even IET, right? I mean, definitely why you won as well. Um, so it's interesting to hear your perspective. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, probably something that a lot of us are in Toastmasters to be better leaders and to be better at our job. So can we also use the same method for, of, uh, for an official presentation? Definitely, definitely. Uh, as a district director, I was communicating all the time. I was on my map to talk when I was thinking. When I was a manager, go Uh, the C level executives, I would about my project status, you know, what, what I wanted to present. And of course, when you're, you have to keep in mind what the audience is, what the audience is expecting. Um, I might, you know, in my project status, there's things I want them to know, but there's things they want to know. So I need to include that. And um, believe it or not, even when I'm talking when I'm doing business talks, when I was doing reports up to, I, what is I do something, find more resource for me? Do I need more time or money? Do I want them to stay the heck out of my project, the desired change I want to make in them? And what's the one point I need to make in order to create that change? It's a, it works in business. It works in district, in leadership. So, yeah. So, shall I ask you another question? Oh, definitely, definitely. I will keep answering questions until you guys tell me I'm done. <laughs> I don't think then you'll be able to go today, Kyle. <laughs> so, one of the questions. Uh, it's interesting because uh, you spoke about how to prepare for a five to seven minutes. Can we use the same method for table topics? How do we do that? Okay, um, I, I do not use mind mapping for table topics. And, and I did notice that in the chat, one of the questions was, what's the difference between, between doing this and doing table topics? Do, preparing, using mind mapping to prepare speech is not impromptu, it's near impromptu. Um, I've been given, uh, sp once speaker one didn't show up and they asked for a replacement for speaker one. And I went, sure. Now the Toastmasters busy going down the rolls of who's doing what, and then they're gonna launch the meeting. I had maybe 60 seconds <laughs> to, to mind map my talk. And, but I, I pulled out a piece of paper, central topic, idea, 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 I'm done. Not quite impromptu, near impromptu. Table topics is impromptu. You really can't 
stand up. You can't, you don't have time to, to pull out a piece of paper and brainstorm a subject. Let me tell you how I approach it differently. You've seen how I approach mind mapping. When I'm doing table topics, my advice is look for the emotion in the question. Whatever the person is asking you, look for the emotion that you have or that is elicited by the question and follow that emotion to the answer. Now that's straying off topic here, but that's what I look for. Um, one of the strangest table topics questions I ever heard, uh, the table topics master simply asked, chocolate or vanilla? That was the question, chocolate or vanilla? Well, immediately I thought chocolate. And that brought me back to childhood and my love of chocolate ice cream in childhood. So that's what I talked about. I followed the emotion to the answer and there was no brainstorming, no, no plotting, no drawing uh, for it. So straight off topic a little bit, talking about table topics, but you asked. I think because a lot of us need to use uh, table topics more in every day in our life at home, at work. So it makes very sense powerful. For, I guess, yeah. Um, so the other question is, can this be used for speeches where we have to research? Definitely. Definitely. Now, it's going to be used a little differently. So you're researching a topic. You're reading a book. You're going out and, and uh, uh, searching on the Internet. You're taking notes. You're listening to blogs. You're, you're, you're finding material. So rather than brainstorming the material, you're going out and getting the material from other people. That's, that's step one. Step two is what are your own thoughts? What's your own approach on it? Get that all on a piece of paper or a tool, you know, get it all on a piece of paper. Now you can use the mind map to help organize it. You may end up redrawing it several times because it's not just a brainstorm going on, a, going, it's not just whatever's in your head going out of the paper. It's also all the things you learn, but you can use it to clump. You can use it to, to, uh, uh, organize your material, you can use it to order the material, and then of course, apply the principle, what change do I wanna make in the audience? What's the one point I need to make in order to make that change? Use that one point as a razor to cut out the material that doesn't fit and organize it. Uh, one thing I have seen someone do when they were doing something like that, they were taking notes for their, for their research on three by five cards. And then I said, well, put your own thoughts, your own story, whatever, on three by five cards. Get it on a piece, on a table. Get a big table and just lay it out. And now you can organize things easily and then turn it into a mind map. It's an extra step, but it worked, it worked well. I wonder if you walk around with a pack of cards like that, Kyle. I don't, I don't, know. <laughs> Okay, so one of the questions is, in case a speech needs critical evaluation, that includes, you know, advantage, uh, advantages and positive criticism, how do we have to organize? Is it, is it different when we are being evaluated? When, I'm when not sure I understand the question. Uh, um, are, are they asking, do I mind map my evaluations? Because the answer to that is actually yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, so if our speech is being evaluated, uh, yep. you know, how, how do we organize our, you know, uh, thoughts and present it? Okay. We... So, when, well, if you're doing a near impromptu speech, if you've been surprised with this speech, um, I don't walk around with, I don't walk around knowing in my head uh, at the drop of a hat, what my next pathways project is. I'm working three paths at the same time right now. And I don't, I, I would have to look up which project I need to do next to finish a level. So if you asked me to prepare a speech in no time, almost no time, I couldn't tell you what project I'm going to do. I would just, I, I would just tell the evaluator, you know, evaluate me based on an uh, iceberg or evaluate me using pathways project number, which is just generic speech evaluation, um, a level one project two. Uh, preparing a mind map, so the speaker is <clears throat> evaluate me based on project number two, and hey, this is near impromptu. Was, was I coherent? <laughs> and did I say, you know, if, if I was coherent and if I, and if I, and if 
I, if I, tr if they feel like they want to make the change I'm asking them to make, then I've done my job. If I made you think, Hey, maybe we should go out dancing tonight. I did my job. Thank you, Kyle. So you have your notes down on your map, mind map. Now, how yep. do you decide how much time you give each node? It comes from our wonderful audience. Mm. Well, I'm going to answer this two ways. The dancing speech I, I gave you today, um, I had three sub points, type of dance, where to dance, uh, benefits of dancing. I tried to divide that mostly evenly. Uh, and one, one easy way to, get, to decide to give something more time is if it has more ideas. Like we had more ideas under benefits than we did under where to go. So I could give benefits a little bit more time. Uh, the other thing that changes this though is what if I have a story? What if while I'm mind mapping it, I've got a story? Like what if my wife and I met at a dance? Oh, I could tell that story and paint the picture, use, you know, word, use word pictures, use description, talk about emotion, nervousness. Um, I could do that. And story is just a great thing to include in any talk. So if, if while I was mind mapping it, I identified a point, oh, I've got a story about that one, that's getting more time. I will short shift the other stuff to get that story in there. Yeah, wonderful. Because we all more interested to know personal stories rather than, you know, researched uh, yep. points. Yeah. Yep. So do we need to share the closing uh, after the opening and the end of the speech? Do you decide the message first or do you decide the points and then come to the message? I de oh, so I decide the topic first. What can I do? You know, I, I literally follow the process that I laid out. Decide the topic brainstorm the topic, get some ideas on a piece of paper. Once I've done a brainstorm, before I've done any organizing, now I stop and I think, what do, how do I want to change the audience regarding this topic? What is my desired change? My desired change leads me to what is my clothes? And my clothes is the razor I use to trim off the stuff that doesn't fit. That's the process I use. And when I have a close, I use that to think about an opening, what, what opening will lead me to that close? Sometimes it's a question, sometimes it's a story. Uh, especially if you're, if, you're, if you're, when you're planning something really quick, question is a great way to go because it, you know, they, they usually pop in your head right away. What question can I ask that will lead the audience in that direction? Interesting, that's something that we can think about while you're doing table topics as well. Uh, so what is the difference when you're preparing a speech, when you have time and when you don't have time? <laughs> okay. Have so when I have time, uh, let's assume it's a Toastmaster speech. I'm going to go look up my path and which exercise I'm doing. And I choose a topic that will let me work that exercise. Now, if, uh, for instance, uh, if the topic is in level three, there's connect with storytelling. Well, if you're going to connect with storytelling, I better tell a story. <laughs> so I'm going to choose a topic that I have a good story about. Now, that helps me choose my topic. Now I brainstorm the topic. I, I literally do what I do here. I brainstorm the topic, desire change, close, cut away, you know, cut away the material, opening, get the stuff in order. Now I've got a map, but maybe I've got a week before the talk. Okay, I'll take the mind map, I'll go in the bedroom, I'll shut the door and I'll practice it. Practice it out loud. And, oh, gee, that's kind of awkward. Oh, uh, I thought of something that wasn't on my mind map that I want to include. Uh, here's details of my story I want to capture. So I may make notes and then go back and rewrite my mind map. Practice, rewrite, practice, rewrite. Uh, so if I, if I have the time to prepare like that, if it's not near impromptu, then I still use the same technique in that speech when I actually get to my club to deliver the talk. Yeah, I have an email. And, Sorry. and when I show up to, to deliver the talk, I'll still have one sheet of paper with a mind map on it tucked in my pocket in case I want to review my notes before I go up. So how big a paper do you carry? Well, 
the, you can, you guys can't see this because Zoom doesn't show white paper really well. Um, this is this is this is my original mind map for this talk from something like 15 years ago. Um, uh, that's just an eight and a half sheet of paper, which I I could fold up and stick in my pocket. And most likely, I'll never take it out of my pocket because I know I know the presentation. Uh, and if I've practiced a talk through, most likely, they never take notes out of my. Okay, I think uh, we we'll catch the first flight to where you are to listen more of what you have to say once COVID is over. And but probably we are able to listen to you from so far away because of the pandemic. So it may be a blessing in disguise. Thank you, Kyle. It was wonderful. It was even more difficult to manage the questions. Half of it has not even been asked during registration and the amount of messages. Our chat monitor is just on and on sharing messages with me. Thank you so much. And thank you to the wonderful audience who kept us going and you know, um, getting Kyle to give all that information that we all want to know and learn. Over to you, Mayur. Thank you so much, Vandana and Kyle, to enlighten us on various questions and topics. It was wonderful insights for all of us to learn more about mind mapping in various ways. Today we learn a lot of ways. Uh, mind mapping so we can compose our speech in while in segments and we can compile it very well in few minutes thank you vandana and kyle once again now we are moving for table topic session i hope you will be able to apply your mapping techniques in your table topics today so let me invite our table topic master of the mm -hmm. day he is born and brought up in a small town known as Thalassery in northern part of Kerala. Currently, he is working as an assistant vice president and recently got promoted for this post as in data science department at SSBC. His hobbies include swimming and traveling, but both are halted due to COVID. In TOS, he is his Toastmaster for more than two years and he is doing, he was the last term treasurer at Speech Weavers. Put your hand together to welcome our Table Topic Master of the Day, Toastmaster Ashwin. Over to you. Would you get uncomfortable if your boss suddenly asked you to give a presentation in five minutes without any preparation? Are you afraid to communicate with your spouse in a difficult situation? Table topics is the answer. Thank you, Toastmasters of the day, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. A very warm good evening, good morning to all of you. Toastmasters want to challenge the members to develop their communication and uh, impromptu communication skills to effectively think on their feet by answering under his questions. So we also want to give the non role takers and the guests an opportunity to speak uh, in each meeting. So table topics is specifically designed to develop uh, four essential communication skills, listening, thinking, organizing and speaking. As I conduct the table topics, I'll pick uh, one of your random and I'll read out the table topic. So uh, remember, you have to respond it within one to two minutes. So at one minute, the timer would show a green signal. At one and a half minutes, the timer would show a yellow signal. And at the end of two minutes, it will show a red signal. Uh, you'll, you'll have another 30 seconds within which you have to wrap up your speech. So hope everybody is clear with the rules. Uh, if uh, you are interested, please write, uh, uh, send a message on the chat box if you are willing to participate in the table topics. So while you do that, I'd like to call uh, one of the table, I mean, Toastmasters uh, to give the guests a fair idea of how uh, the table topics is conducted. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Farooq. Would you like to start with the first one? Can you please unmute Farooq? Uh, uh, 
host can you please uh, i am on uh, i am unmuted now i can speak yeah right thank you uh your topic is when was the last time you felt lucky when was the last time you felt lucky toast pass yes, over yes that is a very good topic ashwin and when was the last time i felt lucky every day of my life i feel lucky if i am able to wake up every morning i feel lucky because a lot of people die in their sleeps they are not able to we should be thankful for even waking up in the morning so every day of the life we should be thankful and we should feel lucky that we are blessed in this life and we are living another day to make a difference in other people's lives also because if we are not thankful for what we have soon when we that goes away you will realize that what we were missing out we have our dreams we have our goals but what we are doing to achieve them we do we should not depend on the luck we should not depend on the things that are not in your control you should depend on the things that are in your control those your your actions your intentions your thoughts because all those things collectively make you lucky the harder you work the more luckier you will get the saying goes like that so you are in control of your destiny you are the ceo of your life so you have to create your own luck you have to do the things the way, the, the way you want to do and you will like get more luck here so it's a, every day is a lucky day for me and I, every day i make it count because if you don't make your days count you will be just found counting your days 1 2 3 2 4 5 six so that's not how you want to live live a free life live a life at your own terms over to you tabletop master thank you to spaster umar that was wonderful you are your life zone ceo that's very great thank you now i'll move on to the next topic uh, do we have uh, let me look at the chat box uh feta feta nal i'm not sure with them okay yeah we have canin uh zoom yeah yeah unmuted thank you thank you for the your topic is what do you know well enough to teach to others what do you know well enough to teach to others over to you feta what do i know well enough to teach others now look just take it this way you're 60 years old you've been married for 38 years my god the wealth of experience i'm not talking about being a leader for 40 years i'm just talking about now you as a person who is married and my advice which i would like to actually not teach but give uh, as a gift as in a form of wisdom particularly to those who are newly married follow this advice and trust me you will have the happiest life ever i went through hell when i got married with my wife we both young and she has her mindset and i have my mindset and we disagree sometimes and sometimes it's a heated up disagreement that it ends up for one week she doesn't cook for me i have to eat hamburgers outside for one week i have to sleep in a different room and it takes us days before we get back together till one day i discovered the secret one day she said something to me and i wasn't in a mood of answering so i was silent and she kept saying i'm right right i kept silent and guess what ladies and gentlemen within the hour she said to me would you like to eat something can i cook so i said my god i've got the magic answer don't say anything but to your wife so even if she says something wrong and you really want to get back at her smile i smile and she says i'm right 
So I smile. Say something. I just smile. So listen to me. If you are at the early stage of your wedding and you don't wait till you become 60, because I discovered this at 60, okay? Take this free advice right now and be nice to your wife no matter what. Even if she's wrong, smile and say, yes, darling, you won't suffer. That's the best advice I can give to anybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fatal. Take that advice. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It'll be useful for me. <laughs> Yes, uh, we'll go with the next topic. Do, do we have a Pankaja? Can you get it? Yeah, I think uh, it's you're still muted. Punk sure, yes. Yes, you're there. Okay, Pankaja, your topic is, how do you deal with isolation and loneliness? How do you deal with isolation and loneliness? Toastmaster Pankaja. Isolation and loneliness, that's tough. And how tough is it when we have 112 participants? I have friends here at a Zoom meeting when we have a presenter like Kyle Hall talking to you in the midst of isolation and loneliness. This is tough, right? When I couldn't even have spoken to Kyle because he was miles and seas away, seven seas away from here, if it was normal times. And in the pandemic, what we call as isolation, he's right here. I can talk to him and listen to him in my room at my home in Pune, a city in Maharashtra on the Western coast. This is a way you handle isolation and loneliness. Now I had the option either to switch off my screen and do something else or to switch on the screen, log in and listen to Kyle and to come to this meeting. The option is always with you. What is outside is there, but how you handle that is up to you. And when I switched on and when I was in this meeting and I heard this beautiful table topics, for example, when Fatah spoke and he, he gave us advice. So it was free advice given to us for all kinds of challenges. So today I know how to do mind mapping for a table topics, for a ICJ speech and for my corporate presenter. And I also know how to have good relationships with my colleagues and with my friends. I've learned so much in the midst of isolation. Is isolation bad? It's up to you, table topic master. Thank you Pankaja, for that wonderful uh, speech. Now we'll move on to the next uh, topic with Puneet, Toastmaster Puneet. Uh, can the Zoom master please unmute Toastmaster Puneet? Yes, table topic master. Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Your topic is what are the three top qualities that you look for in a friend? What are the three top qualities that you look for in a friend? Puneet, who do you? Let me borrow some values from our own Toastmasters because I believe those are the best values one can ask for. Number one, integrity. Number two, respect. Number three, service. And number four, excellence. IR at SC. That is what I would expect out of any friend. And integrity is one thing which, integrity is something what you say you're gonna do when your thoughts, your actions, your deeds, everything matches. That is when integrity, that is what integrity is in my opinion. And that is what something which I would look for, integrity. Number two, being there for each other. Number three, the most important and the foundation for any relationship is respect. No res give respect and take respect. If respect doesn't exist, 
then I think it's high time that we have to walk from that relationship or that friendship as well. And last but not the least, excellence. But I think it's all four. It's very difficult to justify all four. But let me pick one instance out here with regards to respect and how I learned in the most brutal way. Back in the year 2016, when I was in my third year of college, I had to make money because there was some car project where I desperately needed to make some money. And I actually got good trust of my friends in, in my three years of my college journey. I was also the class representative and I was given the opportunity to print lab manuals, laboratory manuals and circulate across to my friends in my batches. And this was my way of making the money. And I thought, okay, why people anyways trust me, they respect me a lot for whatever I have done. So I thought, let me take advantage of this position and make some money out of it, which I did. But when I told this to my younger, my best friend, Kushal, he was livid. He was angry. And he said, and I quote, we 200 people trusted you and this is what you did. I can never expect from a friend like you. How would you feel when your best friend embarrasses you in front of your entire class? That day I learned the value of respect that if, that if, uh, if I cannot respect my colleagues, if I don't repay their faith, then I don't have the, what you can call it, I cannot expect respect from them as well. I disrespected my friends by cheating them and I paid for it. So that is one lesson which I have learned. Give respect, take respect. That's it from my side. Other three principles can be dealt in later part of the table topic. Back to you. Thank you so much, table topic master. Thank you, Toastmaster Puneet. Give respect and take respect. Uh, interesting. Thank you. Uh, we have got a lot more uh, uh, raising of hands and on the chat box. I can see a lot of people uh, volunteering to attend table topics, but unfortunately, we have to stop because of the paucity of time. Uh, I wish I could have taken more topics, but that brings us to the end of a wonderful table topic session, short and sweet. I really enjoyed giving those table topics and I hope those who have participated enjoy it as well and even the ones who listen. So with that, I'm handing over the control back to the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Mayur. Over to you, Toastmaster Mayur. Thank you so much, uh, Ashwin, for conducting a, a very, very beautiful table topic session. Uh, I want to ask one question to Kyle. What do you think, Kyle? How many of the table topic speakers were able to apply mind mapping while giving their speeches? <laughs> well, one of the beautiful things about uh, get, delivering a well-organized talk is you can't tell how they organized it. You can't tell whether they planned it for months or whether they stood up and just delivered it. Now, if they deliver a disorganized talk, you might be able to tell. Uh, but you guys had some very well organized talks, so well done. Okay, thank you so much, for, uh, Kyle, for giving that answer. I hope you enjoyed all the uh, throughout the meeting and workshop given by Kyle Hall. I thank uh, Ashwin as well for conducting the table topic session, and I would like to ask all, all of our audience to share feedback to Kyle shared in the chat box by opening the link and to us as well in the chat box. Now I would like to hand over to our presiding officer, Toastmaster Deepa. Over to you, Deepa. I think it's time for Neelu Mayur. Okay, sorry for that. And now I would like to invite uh, our, uh, for vote of thanks by Toastmaster Neelu. And she is a certified image consultant and uh, she is also helping us uh, and she is a transformational coach makeover spe specialist she recently completed her level 2 in presentation mastery now uh, please welcome uh, toastmaster nilu to give vote of thanks over to you nilu uh, yeah apology uh, my video is off because there's a power cut and uh, still no I would problem. need every vote of thanks. A uh, good evening to all the Toastmasters guests and our esteemed speaker, Kyle Hall. I really thank you, sir, for uh, taking a uh, time uh, early morning around 5.30 and coming here to give us 
and conducting an excellent workshop on how to write good speech fast with such a wonderful technique of mind mapping. I would like to thank our area director, Srinu Babu, for our trusted, for being our trusted advisor. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for today's meeting. I would like to thank all our role takers for the day. Toastmaster Akash and Toastmaster Sushma for being the Zoom master with whose help we are able to enjoy the successful online meeting. Our supersonic hero, DTM Milind, our immediate past president for bringing an energetic start to the meeting and grabbing all our attentions for the meeting. And uh, Toastmaster Vandana for immediately taking up the role of presenting officer and giving great start to the meeting by handing over the meeting to our moderator. I would like to thank our VP Education Toastmaster Mayur for being the moderator. Thanks a lot for finding such an inspiring and thank you Mayur for being the event chair today and for successful organization of the meeting. I would like to thank, thank Kyle Hall for the wonderful technique of mind mapping and uh, the best part was making us work on the topic and involving all of us with you. And I must say you enrich the topic of dance, connecting with your, uh, you know, connecting with all your experience. And I would like to thank Toastmaster Vandana for being a Q&A moderator who got all the questions from our amazing audience and made sure that we all got to learn more from Kyle. Thank you, Vandana, for making it very interesting Q&A. And Toastmaster Adarsh, who has been a chat moderator, who has played an excellent role in greeting the audience and engaging the audience via chat, aiding Vandana, sharing the meeting agenda, feedback form, and social media links. Toastmaster Ashwin, a table topic master for conducting an exciting table topic session with very interesting questions. Mm -hmm. And one who is playing an important role of timing all the role takers as a timer, our own Toastmaster Pulkit. Thank you to all our participants from different parts of the world for making this meeting a successful. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, uh, Mayur. Thank you. Toastmaster Nilu for organizing both of thanks for every role takers. And we are happy that uh, we got to learn mind mapping techniques, how we compose our, our script in few minutes. Now I would like to call our role takers and Kyle Hall. With that, I would like to hand over to our presiding officer, Toastmaster Deepa, over to you, Deepa. Thank you, Mayur. I've been waiting for my time and I lost my connection in the beginning because the monsoon has set in and the internet went just crazy. And I'd promised Kyle to, that I'd mention how many countries people had joined us from 30 countries, Uganda, Australia, Bulgaria, Trinidad, Ireland, Malaysia, Japan, Philippines, Greece, Singapore, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Spain, US, UK, South Africa, Qatar, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Sudan, Vietnam, Pakistan, Kenya, Canada, <coughs> and another list goes, my breath ran out. You are officially a Toastmaster celebrity. A big round of applause to you. Thank you for conducting this wonderful session. I mean, the topic was so interesting, um, mind mapping. And another something I just wanted to share with our audience is, is does anybody here know who is the inventor of the concept called mind maps? Anybody? Raise your hand, I'll unmute you. Or Yes, Umar, uh, can you unmute Umar? Okay, I'll just reveal oh, it. Tony, it's, Tony, it's, Tony Buzan, Tony Buzan. Yes, that's right, Umar. It's Tony Buzan. And do you, do you know that he was a Toastmaster himself? I yes. bet you, you didn't know this. He's uh, so, 
So that was one thing that I wanted to tell you, and thank you so much that, uh, for helping us bring write good speeches. I'm definitely going to apply your techniques. The learning that you gave us today, I'm sure most of us in the room will carry forward in their lives. Permanent impression is what you created, Toastmaster Kyle. A huge round of applause to you. I'd like to share my screen and present to you your appreciation <laughs> certificate. Can you spotlight Kyle alongside? Thank you so much, Kyle. We will send it to you over email again. Uh, at, during your session, we had a record number of 197 people. 197? And, and I've never seen that happen. Yes, I've never seen wow. that even in district events. That's wow. your power. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody in the audience, for being part of this wonderful workshop for taking part. I've never seen the chat box buzzing and populating so quickly ever so far. So thanks for doing that and being so interactive. And I, I'm sure you all appreciate the presentation and I'm sure you are walking away with valuable learnings today. Uh, I'd like to take some feedback from the audience and I I'll call off the meeting after that. So may I request Doris Tuckett from United States to give us your feedback on how the session went. Oh. Akash, can you unmute Doris Tuckett or can you make me the host? I can see her. Doris, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, keep pressing the buttons. Thank you. <laughs> good morning, everyone, or good evening. And thank you, Kyle, for that excellent presentation today. I really like the download so I can use it for my next presentation. I'm so excited that I'll be able to do that about mind mapping. And I always enjoy as many tools as possible in my journey as a Toastmaster and speaker. I really enjoyed the meeting today and hopefully I'll come and visit you again. And thank you for the invite, Deepa. Thank you so much, Doris. And I'd like, next I'd like to go to Toastmaster Tomoko for, all the way from Nagasaki, Japan. What did you feel about our workshop today? Can you unmute now? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, you muted again. Can you try again? Ah, okay. Thank you for giving me a chance to appreciate uh, Kyle. Uh, I, I really learned a lot because my problem was how to remember, memorize the speech because I, I, I hate to read the script and I hate to uh, do like this. And so I always try to memorize my speech. Yesterday, I had a speech, icebreaker speech, and I memorized. But uh, in that case, I took a note, like a uh, short note, just in case. Uh, so the, uh, I, I want to ask you a question, last question, is it okay? Uh, do, do you write the script if you have plenty of time or never? You just prepare mapping. I never write out a speech verbatim unless okay. I'm competing in the international speech contest. Because once you get past the district level, the judges ask for a copy of the previous speech you got, uh, pre -pre previous speech you gave. I, I'm, I'm not a person who writes out speeches verbatim. I see. Thank you very much. Mm, mm, that, uh, I will try your way. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. Back to you, Deepa. Thank you, Master Tomoko. I think that wraps us out from that wraps our meeting today. I hope you had a delightful time. I did. Please leave your feedback. We send a feedback link to your emails as well. Kyle really wants to know how his workshop went and he wants to improve. He's a forever learner. And with that, I'd like to invite you all
to our meeting next time. We will plan something in again next week. So please come to Speech Weavers again Friday, but we meet at 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So just follow the same link and drop in. We'd be more delighted to have you in our club. And, uh, and please follow us on the social media handles that Adarsh has put up in the chat box. Thank you. Have a great weekend and goodbye.